The Pro Series is the hour's best selling motherboard out there. It's Gigabyte's best attempt to show off its engineering skills without going through berserk pricing. It's mercilessly going after gamers and enthusiasts and anything in between. And I both reviewed uh, its Z390 and X570 versions and absolutely loved it. And I, I'm almost tempted to say that these were my favorite motherboards I ever reviewed. Today we are reviewing Gigabyte's very own Z490 Aorus Pro AX, one of the most anticipated gamers board of this season, a board which will define its entire lineup with one goal and one goal only, crush its competition. Fun fact for you, crush with a French pronunciation uh, uh, sounds like crush. So if you wanted to say it, with the, yeah, I want to crush my competition, crush it, I want to crush it, it's not the same, it's missing something. Ours is Gigabyte's gamers focused branding. It's been designed to address every gamer's secret desire almost. And the Pro Series tries to give enthusiast builders everything they could ever possibly dream of with a definite focus on performances. And this is not just another year because the Z490 powered motherboards have to deal with two big changes compared to its predecessor. First, it has to transition from PCIe 3.0 standard to PCIe 4.0, which means a very different manufacturing process and a higher core count in order to uh, sustain the core count war that Intel is waging with AMD. And it'll take every bit of engineering skills that Gigabytes has to find its way to your wallet. Now, starting with the obvious. Our Z490 Aorus Pro AX comes with a six layered ATX PCB, two more layers than its predecessor, giving this board a better signal isolation and the ability of safely handling PCIe 4.0 bandwidth levels, as well as better VRM heat dissipation. It is powered by the brand new LGA 1200 CPU socket, which can only support 10th and 11th generation of Intel Core CPUs. Note that the PCIe 4.0 abilities of our boards will only be unlocked by the 11th generation of Intel Core CPU, effectively doubling its available bandwidth. And I have to note that if it was not uh, um, for the new LGA 1200 CPU socket, it's quite clear that both Z390 and Z490 chipset would be able to support 9th and the new 10th generation of Intel Core CPU, make it forward and backward compatible. So it feels like maybe Intel did that with the purpose of pushing the purchase of a new motherboard a year earlier or a year early before the PCIe 4.0 is really introduced uh, on their platform. A little bit sucky from Intel, but nothing to do with the manufacturers themselves. VRM-wise, well, this is where Pro Series usually shines and shiny does. We do have 13 55 amps direct phases, 12 of which are CPU-centric. More than you'll ever need to run and seriously overclock any processors available in the 10th and 11th generation of Intel Core CPUs. Cooling wise, we do have a two stages pipe connected heat sinks. The first stage is made of a premium thin heat sink, providing a large radiating surface, which is exactly what you wanna see when dealing with seven uh, 55 amps direct phases. Our second stage is a rather thick and tall heat sink, which does a satisfying job at keeping the remaining six phases away from thermo throttling. And despite not being the coolest among this, its category, because you know, with a uh, with a 10 core overclocked at 5.3 gigahertz, which by the way was stunningly stable and flawless, I've detected temperature going all the way up to 80 degrees Celsius, which is noticeably um, hotter than its competition, but still quite far away from thermo throttling measure. So I would have maybe liked to see a second thin heatsink instead of a tall solid one, but all in for all, a very satisfying result. RAM rise, our board can support up to 128 gigabyte of DDR4 RAM, overclockable up to an exciting, crazy, insane, 5,000 megahertz. Um, I think I've seen a 5,000 megahertz somewhere. I think it was a Crosshair 8 or something like this on the X570 powered motherboard. Um, this is the very limit 
that uh, we have on DDR4 memory sticks, as far as I know. It also means that you will be able to sustain 3.6 and 4,000 megahertz RAM sticks in a much more stable way that we've seen before because it's not always easy to get there. So a definite and immediate uh, performance impact on our day-to-day -day computing and another big kudos to ours for this. Staying in the memory, this board can support up to three M.2 solid state drive sticks. Since our chipset is obtain ready, we can hope to see data swaps picking up to 32 gigabit per second per stick. But coupled with the 11th generation of core CPU, you can hope to see your CPU fed M.2 solid state drive going up to 64 gigabit per second. In both cases, M.2 solid state drives are notoriously hot and fortunately enough we have this wonderful thick large thermo padded heat shields which do a superb job at keeping our M.2 solid state drives cool as can be. My only critic here is the fact that the 64 gigabit one does not have a heat shield and uh, since it's gonna go faster it is the one most likely to their most throttle so make sure to buy one which comes with a pre-mounted thermo shield on it. Now taking a closer look to our chipset we will find nothing more than a Z390 chipset with an upgraded Wi-Fi 6 model. That's it. So whatever is fed through this chipset will only be stuck at PCIe 3.0 standards and on the plus side it only will produce 6 watt worth of heat which translates in, in very low temperatures especially when looking at the massive very thick premium chipset heat shield that comes with this motherboard. Export wise, we have five PCIe slots, two bachelors and three 16 slots with different speeds. As usual, only the first one can deliver up to 16 lane speeds. This is where you'd want your unique GPU for optimal performances. In a dual GPU configuration, our slots will be sharing bandwidth in an eight by eight PCIe lane configuration. And our third and last 16 PCIe will be capped at four PCIe lanes, not exactly the best option to run a video card. And that is precisely why only our two first 16 slots have been metallically reinforced. Note that if coupled with the 11th generation of Intel CPU, these two PCIe slots will see their bandwidth double. Now, side note, I see you coming with your big boots. Since PCIe 4.0 doubles the available bandwidth on our PCIe slots, well, it should double our video card performances, shouldn't it? Oh child. Since our current video cards are yet to produce enough bandwidth to surpass the PCIe 3.0 standard, in a PCIe 3 or PCIe 4 enabled motherboard, you will get exactly the same results or performances. But next generation AMD or Nvidia video card might change that very soon. So it's great for future proofing, but at the time of this review, uh, don't count of seeing anything tangible in terms of performances gain. And of side note. Back IO wise, first let me note the presence of an integrated back IO plate, always a good start. And starting from the left, we got four second generation plugs, which is good, at least we don't have a PS2 connector, which is nice, but I would have liked from Aeros to be a little bit more adventurous and, and get us four third generation USB plugs. Leave a little, you know? A 802.11ax dual band Wi-Fi 6 adapter, noticeable upgrade and signaling Intel finally catching up on AMD and giving us 2.4 gigabit per second transfer rate. Our 1.4 HDMI display outputs, three third generation 5 gigabit plugs and three third generation 10 gigabit plugs, including a type C. A 2.5 gigabit LAN, which is a first upgrade of this kind for at least five years. And, and absolutely welcomed as far as I'm concerned. And finally, our rather excellent ALC 1220 VB Realtek audio codec, which takes full advantage of our six PCB layers, since the left and right audio channel have been traced on dedicated and individual PCB sheet, giving that almost perfect uh, acoustic isolation. And I also want to mention the WIMA capacitors, which are simply the very best you can hope for in the industry today. Just an absolute pleasure to game with. Now logically moving to our board IOs. We start with the usual two second generation USB front panel connectors for transfer and monitoring, one third generation five gigabit front panel connector, a Thunderbolt 3 connector, which is a must on any Intel powered motherboard, and a single channel type C front panel connector, which is kind of a bummer because I've seen ASRock doing this, you know, putting a Type-C, which, you know, communicates to everybody that it's a 10 gigabit 
uh, a plug, but then just put a channel. And there is a C490 chipset, so we have plenty enough bandwidth. So I don't know, it, it sounds a little bit lazy, not cheap, but lazy coming from the manufacturer. And I really hope ours will fix this like now right now and thankfully next something i absolutely love and adore we have eight hybrid fans and again we've seen those in other hours or gigabyte motherboards and what that means is that every individual fan connector can do different things either support a pwm fans water pump water flow sensors what have you and it adds such an agility to the board it makes it easier for first time builder and better for enthusiasts especially the ones who are going to go for custom water cooling systems so something i really really appreciate and hope to see bleed throughout the market so a big big Kudos to ours for this. Troubleshooting wise, well, the board does feature an easy debugger, which will guide us in case of failed boot, a Q flash button for a naked motherboard BIOS update, meaning no CPU or memory installed required. But I do regret the absence of a QLED screen, which would have precisely refined our troubleshooting uh, efforts in this board. And it, to be frank, it is present on, on the Strix Z490e, which is about the same price. So that's not much of an excuse for ours going there. Definitely something I hope I'll see on the next iteration of this motherboard. And finally, this would not be an hours motherboard without testosterone driven RGB connectors and connections all over it. Starting with one under our IO roofing and one embedded into the PCB itself. And because it's never enough, we have an additional four RGB Fusion 2.0 connectors, two of which are addressable, conveniently placed in pairs and at both extremities of our board for easy access. If you ever wanted to trap rainbow loving uh, unicorns, well, with this board, you can. In conclusion, the Z490 Hours Pro AX will cost you about $270 before taxes, which is about 20 bucks cheaper than its competition. And before going in details, the first thing you need to know that this is a PCIe 4.0 motherboard right now running on a PCIe 3.0 processor, meaning you're not gonna have access to all of its benefit and potential. So if you are running right now a Z390 motherboard with a ninth generation Intel processor, I would not suggest you to go through an entire motherboard plus processor upgrade. I would wait another year for uh, the 11th generation of Intel Core processor uh, and the PCIe 4.0 standard. And then, then it would worth it, absolutely. Now this set, the Z490 Hours Pro AX strong point is first and foremost its VRM. This is a beautiful, efficient power delivery which will undoubtedly bring any CPU to its natural limit and keep it there. I mean, these 12 direct phases for that price, it's pure luxury, it's luxury all around and it did go a little harder than its competitors but also did a much better job at overclocking without risking any kind of thermal throttling and that's what really does matter here. We also have the memory speed up to 5 gigahertz, absolutely stunning, the WiMAC capacitors which makes this audio uh, codec something absolutely out of the of the common, beautiful to listen to and um, the yes hybrid fan connectors which I absolutely again love and adore and is a big selling point for this motherboard and the durable feel of the product makes it more expensive than it'll cost you so frankly talking i have almost zero critic regarding this motherboard i had a few remarks about you know some usbs and stuff and, and the absence of a qled screen but these are adjustments nothing will really impact the, the qualities and the durability of this motherboard because if you're on the market for a sub 300 dollar Pro gamer enthusiast motherboard. And I'll risk myself to say that the the Z490 Aros Pro AX just stole the crown, and that's absolutely where your money needs to be.